Hello lads and lasses of uh, the Pipe Smokers of Ireland <clears throat> Pipe Club and Community. <clears throat> this is uh, the Pipe Pastor Company from Fresno, California again after long absence. And uh, I want to appreciate uh, care and our, our new administrator for the uh, residence videos for not firing me. Um, I tried to get fired. I wasn't fulfilling my obligation, but they wouldn't let me out. So uh, here I am back again, hopefully on a regular basis. I am smoking today for the first time in probably three months. My special Peterson. And this says, Peterson of Dublin, Pipe Smokers of Ireland 2015 Limited Edition Pipe. Right here, right here. This is to certify that you are now the owner of a specially handcrafted Peterson for the Pipe Smokers of Ireland. Huzzah! This unique pipe encompasses an uh, a XL25 bowl with a stunning green spray. And it is stunning. Look at that. Look at that, everybody. Wow. I don't know if it picks up the green for me. It picks up the green next to my shirt. Beautiful pipe. Beautiful pipe. Wonderful smoker. Oh, I love it. I just love it. So, a stunning green spray finish. Hand engraved Celtic design, sterling silver band, customized for the pipe smokers of Ireland, has been expertly fitted. Each pipe has been individually numbered to 90 pieces. What a blessing. And I'm so happy this is a part of the culture of our group and a part of the tradition of our group now. That uh, thanks to young Glenn Oylen. How you doing, Glenn? Uh, thank you so much for all your efforts and thank you so much for uh, such a rewarding experience in the, in the uh, Pipe Smokers of Ireland. But because of Glenn and care and their friendship, um, we get to have special pipes made um, that are, I think, uh, tokens of uh, our group and Peterson nonetheless. And to commemorate my Irish smoke today and my Irish roots. I'm a, I come from the Donahue clan. I'm smoking Eileen's Dream. Eileen's Dream. Irish cream and white chocolate truffles. It's wonderful. It's very good. I get it from HighlandCigars.com where I get the famous three, the famous trifecta of all aromatic uh, tobaccos, black gold, black gold plus, and one named after me, Pete's Moss. And uh, only only around two other tobaccos I get from Highland uh, to smoke on the side every once in a while, and that's Eileen's Dream and uh, Molta Dolce. I love that stuff too. Michael Rizzo schooled me in one of his videos about uh, what to expect and how to develop a taste for um, non-aromatics, English blends and so forth and so on. And um, I'm developing a taste for him. I've been smoking him for a while now and I'm actually developing a taste for him. What I taste is shite. I can't do it. Uh, I do it every once in a while just to prove to myself I'm an aristocrat, but after smoking these good aromatics, man, I just can't do it. I don't see my my trifecta of, of uh, aromatic uh, tobaccos score five out of five. Room note, taste, smell out of the can, thick smoke, cool smoke, no tongue bite. They score high on all of those. Taste, smell, everything. English tobaccos can taste very good, but they still smell like shite. And my nose is trying to tell me that's what I'm smoking. 
and uh, basically uh, comes out smelling like um, you know cigarette ash or something like that. But what young Michael Rizzo says is that uh, you're not smoking it for the room note. You're not smoking it necessarily for uh, the good smell of the smoke. Um, you're smoking it for the, superior, the superiority of the tobacco. And uh, hoity-toity to you, too. Um, I respect all of you guys that love those kinds of tobaccos. You guys have a, a wide palette of tastes and selections. You know, I'm just a fossil. I'm an old fossil, and I'm rigid in my ways. If I'm going to take the time to have a pipe, I want it to be something familiar, something waiting for me, unless it's a, it's really notable, and I'll try. If you want to send me some stuff that's notable and uh, really good tasting, doesn't bite you, what do you do? Well, let me give you an update. Or if you care, huh? Well, apparently, quite a few of you blokes do care. Uh, almost embarrassing. How many of you guys and gals sent me well wishes? And I mean heartfelt well wishes and um, encouraged me about uh, June 20th I was told I had two days to live um, I had been as you guys know I had a struggle this year with lung problems and uh, from my first knee surgery when I played college football I developed blood clots in my lungs that made them real fragile and I got scar tissue there and so anytime I get a call for something it seems like um, I gravitate toward dry pleurisy is a wet pleurisy and a dry pleurisy and pleurisy is a, a kind of a semi solid lining uh, around your lungs and um, when I get it and I breathe in it feels like my lungs expand into a number of pointed blades it's very painful so it restricts your breathing you don't breathe as deep and then you're prone to pneumonia and all that stuff so I just couldn't get enough oxygen out of the air it felt like and here in Fresno we're in a we're in a valley that gets all of the pollution from San Francisco blows it all down into the valley it settles into the valley and I mean uh, living in Fresno is is not good for your health especially now on top of the soup that we have that's that's our smog all the fires around us they're bad uh, and we're in a drought season I've uh, been that way for a while it all settles it down into the valley so very unclean air but um, somewhere around January or February I started getting peculiar symptoms I started to feel when I worked out a, a weight or a, it was a it was a discomfort a little bit more than just a weight that gravitated flamed up and then came up underneath my chin and my throat and um, you know felt vascular but uh, that's not exactly the symptoms of a heart attack but I suspected something was going on and I suspected it was lungs and um, each year I get a blood test a series of blood tests done multiple times each year I come back healthy as a rock I mean healthy as a horse uh, no cholesterol problems in fact my the bad cholesterol is low but the good cholesterol seems to be low too in my Irish side of the family I'm half Irish and half Sicilian there's diabetes in the Irish side there's some heart problems there and there's some heart problems in the Sicilian side and cancer cancer on the Donahue side too so I had that in my family but not, nothing by the grace of God so uh, there wasn't any indication anything was wrong with me dealing with uh, heart as far as arteries and stuff goes I have a little fib I had a little uh, AFib issue about 15 years ago. I had to get shocked back, you know, stop your heart, shock you back again. 
but I don't have that as a condition or a problem. I just had it then for some for some reason my heart went out of rhythm. So as this thing got worse and worse, I, I, I thought the very worst that I might need to have is what's called an oblation in which they cauterize the nerves to your heart um, that cause it to beat out of rhythm, basically. And problem solved. It's no big, no big deal. Um, so I went through a battery of tests that, that you regularly do about uh, somewhere in early June. Echocardiogram, treadmill, the vest that you wear around your chest. No high blood pressure, none of that, but I kept having really bad pains. The pain started getting worse and worse and frequent. And uh, so as I did the treadmill, I had a heart attack. In fact, I was taken away from my first trip in an ambulance before the, about a week before that because I felt like I was having a heart attack. Went to the emergency. They did a battery of tests, CAT scan. No, no evidence of a heart attack. I'm having a heart attack on the treadmill as I'm, I'm running the treadmill. They had to stop it and give me a, a, a chemical that jacked me up a little bit to, to take the place of running. They kept popping nitro in me, finished the test, no problem. So, when we got the phone call, it said no problem. My wife said to the nurse that called us, well, what should we do? Is there anything he should or not should? Not? She goes, you know, let him go lift weights. Let him go, let him go work out at the gym. And uh, if he if he feels like uh, it's uncomfortable, or whatever, let him stop. And uh, that's that's about it. No restrictions. Just you know, if it's painful, stop. Well, my wife was livid. So Monday morning, that was Friday. Monday morning, I uh, went. I, wor I worked out. Next day, had some issues, didn't feel very good. And so it's, for me, you know, I'm real smart. And so for me, when that kind of stuff happens, that just means you have to work out harder. Kind of like you have a, you have something in your tailpipe and you need to just blow it out. <laughs> so that's uh, smart. Um, we went to the doctors that morning. The doctor said, you know, there's, we're going to start treating this as a lung issue because there's, there's no visible sign there's any arteries that are, are blocked or anything like that. My wife said, what's the percentage of accuracy of all the tests you gave so far? They said, 90%. She goes, that's not good enough. You got anything that's 100%. They said an angiogram, which is where they inject your, uh, your, your, uh, arteries with a dye basically it shows if any of your arteries are plugged or clogged and she said I want that done now I'm just sitting there man I'm out of it so my wife's part Irish and part Scottish and part English not a good combination to get mad took me right in and gave me a angiogram they give you they give you a, a shot what's that what's that stuff called it's kind of like a pain re it's it's a what they give you when they want to give you a truth serum and I forget what the name of that is but they gave me that I felt pretty good and I hear the doctor going oh my god calls my wife and he goes this is not good um, basically the two arteries on the right side of his heart are 100% blocked and the Widowmaker, the artery that you don't get a second chance with on the left side is 90% blocked. He's operating on fumes and if he would have continued like this, there's no doubt in my mind he'd have been dead two days from now. Probably at the gym. I told the guy at the gym, if I ever die working out make sure before you take a picture of it 
that you load the weights up so they look like I was bench pressing a million pounds, you know, then take the picture. <laughs> so anyway, he said, your, your wife saved your life. Again, the second time. First time she saved my life spiritually when she led me to the Lord and uh, this time physically. So he said, bad news is you're going to die if nothing's done. The good news is you need a triple bypass. Bang, bang, bada bing, you'll be fine. You'll be, you'll live, live out your life. I'm going to do that. We're going to shine you up, get you to hospital right now. They did. The heart doctor was somewhere in India, so we had to wait a couple of days for him. He came back in June the 20th. That was either Father's Day or the day after. I think it was the day after. No, I think it was Father's Day. Uh, got the triple bypass done, and everything was good to go. Came out of it. They sent me home a day early. Um, I'm, th I'm thankful and grateful that I've been... Uh, lifting weights and I have a really rigorous uh, ab routine so my stomach's real strong good shape because you can't use your arms you can't raise your arms over your head or anything when you have that operation and so you have to it takes a lot of ab work to roll yourself out of bed and everything else so I'm grateful that, for that and uh, all things considering As far as recovery from the heart surgery, no problem. Uh, did, did better than fine, but it's only been the last week I've had any good days because I kept getting pleurisy. I kept getting uh, infections. They have to give me another round of antibiotics and I'd be good for a couple of days after that, after the antibiotics took effect and then I'd get sick again and on and on and on. And, uh, so anyway, not to make a longer story, uh, long story longer, but um, took care of some of that problem and uh, feel pretty good and uh, feel feel okay. The thing I'm struggling with is in my head, not my my body. Just um, you know, some some bouts of depression, which are which is natural. They say. So. To stop your heart for an hour and a half that's that means you're clinically dead a machine is is circulating your blood and they don't know what that does to your soul but uh, you come out of that and um, you know, there's times where I can't find me I don't know where I'm at basically it's kind of kind of tough but my faith in God uh, keeps me from going over the edge and getting into that those deep waters you know so uh, I don't know what the new norm looks like, but we're going for it. And this the this uh, next week, I think it's uh, September the 12th. Um, sh I should have a clean bill of health to go back to the gym and and start working out again, uh, working out my whole body. Right now, I I only can do light weights on my arms and legs and abs. I can work my abs and I can ride a bike. So I'm I'm looking forward to going and hitting it hot and heavy. So. There you have it. Up to date. Bored you once again. Didn't mean to scare Mike Rizzo. He was, he was pretty scared for me. I think that's precious. But all these letters from you guys, my gosh. Rob Gardner, Michael Rizzo, and um, Care. Treated me like Ken. You'd think I was a, a relative of theirs the way they care for me. So many others. Are you? Peter, Phil, man, Phil Hargraves. Blushing, brother. I'm telling you. I feel it. I feel you guys. Before I sign off, oh, I want to I wanna say thank you for some of the gifts. Guys sent me... Uh, all kinds of cool gifts but no pipes don't you guys know when a guy almost dies you're supposed to send him a pipe or something no pipes but I got some stuff that are even better care sent me this a 
rosary forgive me I don't have the letter that came with it um, care if you could leave in the comments where this came from I'd appreciate it because I want to know and I, I I'm, forgive me I, I, I uh, your notes somewhere I can't find it but it's a shrine somewhere in Ireland and it's blessed and uh, this has been with me ever since and uh, it reminds me of my dear friend care and his love for me his care for me his prayers for me um, but also um, I feel close to God with this now that I'm superstitious you know you guys don't have to worry about that but this uh, feels like an anchor and I, I appreciate it care out of my heart I appreciate it when Jamie Jamie made me a pipe brush actually I bought three of them from him for my two sons, my doctor's son Aaron and my son Nick and Michelle. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Look at that. I smoke it of Ireland. Man. Man. And I'm flying my colors, man. This is a finally Bold O'Donoghue got me my gave me my shirt and so here we have it the pipe smokers of Ireland t-shirt you guys see the whole thing boom and uh, yeah oh let's see what I got here from young Michael Rizzo I've got a little package here and let's see what we got going on here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he got me a hand towel. Nice sky blue. Thank you, Michael. Exactly what I wanted was a hand towel. That's a blessing. And I think the hand towel was protecting this. Let's see what he got me. I'm guessing this is going to be one fancy dancy pipe tent. Oh man, look at that. Woo! That looks like olive wood to me. Weighted tip metal. Is that not an awesome pipe tent or what? Virgin flat right here, right? Bam! Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. That is a precious gift, and I appreciate that. And the hand towel. I'm going to use this. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you kindly. I think that's about it. Um, just buried a young man today my son uh, Ben officiated the ceremony I watched over his soul last night in the viewings he was a sheriff in Fresno and that thing, that, that his funeral he, he must have had four or five hundred people there lots of sheriffs lots of law enforcement and um, his family's been a long time in my in my uh, church. His dad was one of my elders. His uh, older brother is one of my elders now, Lonnie. And uh, this young man uh, died of cancer. Big, strong, virile sheriff, and uh, cancer took him. But it. Uh, once again, just uh, inspires me to let you guys know. Now, this is uh, this this gets at the ire of others that look at these videos and um, don't believe there is any room in these videos for religion and uh, and matters of faith. But 
go figure I'm the pipe pastor and if you go on YouTube and look at my videos on there whatever you're gonna always find something in there about my faith now I agree that these videos shouldn't have anything to do with proselyting or uh, or shoving your faith down people's throat and if I come across like that forgive me because I don't like that if somebody does that to me but if I could get you to do anything lads and lasses it would be to read a portion of the Bible that is absolutely stunning in its relevance in its Ecclesiastes if you've kind of looked at your Bible and you, you parted your Bible in the middle, you're either going to hit Psalms, Proverbs, or Ecclesiastes. And not Ecclesiasticus, but Ecclesiastes. And uh, basically all Ecclesiastes stands for is preacher. And it's Solomon's wisdom as he got older. The wisest man in the world, by the way. And uh, the wisest man that ever lived. And it's uh, his last, last writings and he was older. And if you don't understand the code in which you wrote it, it can be very pessimistic and, and a real downer. But if you understood the keys to understanding that, and I've got a series of sermons, what you know this came up, huh? Uh, on uh, the link is thelegacychurch.net. Click media, and you'll you'll see our sermons on there. You can listen to if you're bored, constipated, or have insomnia. And uh, but anyway. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 7 through chapter 12. It's absolutely must read, in my opinion. But it begins with these words. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. And then goes on and says, before, basically, you get old and die. Remember your creator. And I can say, in a, I guess I had somewhat like a near-death experience. I had two two days to live and didn't know it. And uh, I wasn't living as if I had two days to live. But basically, you don't know, and I don't know how many days we have on this earth. And the most important thing, Ecclesiastes says, is make sure you live your life to the fullest, but remember God. Live your life to the fullest, but remember you're going to take, be, you're going to give account for the way you live your life, and that should put the fear of God in you, and a desire to uh, live right before God, so that you die with no regrets, and uh, so you can die in peace, knowing that everything's cool with you and Him, and you lived your life the best you could. I think that's good advice. Any way you cut the pie. That's good advice. Yeah, I'm appreciative of the fact that I have friends and I have a very wide group of friends via my videos and uh, Pipe Smokers of Ireland, other pipe clubs uh, that I am privileged to know and who, although don't know me, leave no doubt, I, I have no doubt if they, if they were within reach, their sentiment for me wouldn't change. And uh, that makes a man feel like either he has a hammock underneath him or, or he has a safety net, something that holds up his soul when, uh, when he's especially struggling with some self-doubt. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate that fact. If you are ever in Fresno, please give me a call. We'll hook you up and uh, we'll have some good times together. So, I'm um, glad to be back, glad to be smoking my pipe for the first time in a long time. This is delicious, and I'm glad to be talking with you. Until I come at you again next week, whether I pick up where I left off last time with some very controversial remarks or not, I don't know. But uh, one thing's for sure, I'll be back. By the grace of God, I'll be back, and thank you for having me. Um, till I come back next time, uh, we'll talk to you later. This is the Pipe Pastor. Slaunch it.